oh boy. We've got a slight overhang. Hopefully this thing works. I think it's in. Oh, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. So if you remember, I did an unboxing of this Old Town Autopilot 120 about a month ago. I've been traveling a ton. I've been super busy. I've had quite a few tournaments and I haven't had the chance to get this thing out. Today seemed to be like the perfect day to take the maiden voyage on this Old Town Autopilot 120. Whew. I'm already tired. I've just been kind of cleaning this thing off and getting it ready. Still need to put the prop on for the trolling motor and set up the remote for it, but I don't think that'll be too hard. We'll do that when we get to the lake and probably throw a couple rods in here, try to catch a couple fish, but mainly just getting out to test this thing out. I'm really happy that it fits in the van and it was actually really easy to get in here too. I feel like this thing almost needs a trailer. Personally, you guys know this, I fish out of a John boat 95% of the time. I love fishing out of the John boat. I really don't think there's any areas that a kayak can get into that the John boat can't, but who knows, maybe this thing will change my mind. And while I haven't had any bad experiences kayak fishing, personally, for me, I would choose the John boat every time over the kayak. But let's get this thing over to the lake and see how she does. Well, I'm getting everything set up for this Old Town and I got the motor on. I hooked up the Dakota Lithium and for whatever reason I can't get the trolling motor to turn on. I'm sure it's something that I'm doing wrong, but I'm just doing a little bit of troubleshooting here. I've got the key in, the battery's connected properly. I've got both connections from the battery to the trolling motor hooked up, but I'm not getting any power. I don't know if the trolling motor needs to be down. There's another kill switch, which I'm assuming is a little magnet on the base of the trolling motor here. So I don't know if they need to be together or not, but even the, the test doesn't work. I'm just going to dump it in the water and hope that I can figure it out. I'm going to switch to the GoPro, leave the big camera here just in case I flip this thing over or sink it. We'll see you guys out on the water. Highly recommend a set of wheels. Of course. Are you fishing? I'm gonna try. Oh, okay. oh I guess I need rods. <laughs> well, we're floating. I don't think we're sinking, so that's good. I'm gonna put this trolling motor in and see if it does anything. I heard the beeps, that's a good sign. Oh, we got movement. Made it out on the lake, we got this thing up and running. Luckily, the trolling motor just needed to be pulled down into place for it to hit that second kill switch for it to turn on. It automatically turned on, connected to the remote too. I didn't have to pair it or anything, it just happened automatically. And it was just plug and play after that. I was a little worried because it wasn't getting any power when I plugged the battery up and tested it on shore. But as long as that piece is down, it's good to go. It seems like the best thing to do is keep this trolling motor straight 
and use the foot pedals and the rudder in the back to steer you. So if you press the right one, you'll go right. You press the left one, you're going left. Cool thing about this is your hands free. So right now I could be tying things on rods, uh, getting camera stuff ready, all of that good stuff. And this thing also has spot lock, which I haven't tested yet, but we're gonna give that a shot. Also, I know I should probably have a PFD on right now. It's sitting right here, I literally just realized I didn't have it on. I'm gonna throw that on. I've got the kill switch on, which is good. Set up some GoPros, get some rods ready, and hopefully christen this boat with a fish. So when the trolling motor is up like this, it actually does have a release handle, just like a normal trolling motor on a John boat or bass boat. Pull this, locks down into place. Then you just cinch it down right there. That holds, it's good to go. I'm gonna try throwing this little under spinner on for a little bit. I got a 3.8 saucy swimmer on here. This point has a bunch of grass on it. I just wanna rip it over top of that grass for a little bit and see what happens and then probably hit another spot. Let's keep moving around and checking some other spots. Fun driving this little kayak around. See, with this autopilot, I can answer comments on YouTube between spots. It's perfect. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, this spot lock might have sold me on kayak fishing. It's one of my least favorite things about being on a kayak is trying to fish a spot and constantly having to get on the paddles and move around. I literally positioned this thing right where I want it on the point and it is just sick. I mean, it's keeping me right where I need to be. Granted, it's not too windy right now. This is enough wind that would be blowing me off the spot and I'd have to keep paddling and moving it around. Oh, bite. Hit. Eat it. We're gonna test this kill switch too real quick. Look at that. So you keep this thing strapped to you. That's where it goes there in the key slot. And if you were to fall out, kayak might run over. So I obviously don't have a graph on this boat, so I'm fishing off a of history. Basically just hitting the spots where I've caught them over the last few weeks or month. Trying to stick around the grass, keeping my eyes and ears peeled for any bait hitting the surface. So the last few weeks, there have been plenty of times I'm out here and I start catching fish because I see them blowing up on shad. So we had a little bit of rain this past weekend and it kind of dirtied the water up a little bit and I haven't seen really anything on top. So it's making me think they're either more suspended or hugging the bottom. And I'm just fishing in the areas where the fish, where they should be, I'm trying a bunch of different baits. Right now I'm throwing the underspin again, just over top of this grass, probably seven or eight feet. And when I'm getting a little bit deeper, I'll throw that Ned rig off the points and drop-offs. It definitely is harder fishing blind, I'll say that much. It'd be nice just to see where the fish are sitting in the water column. Oh, finally. Ooh, this one feels pretty decent. What do we got, boys? What do we got? Oh, yeah. Just a little one. He's just fighting like crazy. Come on. In the boat. Oh. It took me a while to get one. <laughs> but first fish of the new kayak right there. Stoked. All right, buddy. All right, let's go did what we came to do. So I spent about four hours yesterday out on the Autopilot 120. 
I truly wasn't expecting too much. I mean, I've fished off kayaks quite a few times and I wasn't sure how much of a difference that the autopilot would make. And I can say that I was truly impressed. Honestly, the key feature that sets this kayak apart from any other kayak that I've fished from would have to be that motor with the spot lock. It completely changes the game in my opinion and it truly made it so effortless to fish off of this thing. So there's a couple things I want to go over with you guys before we close this video out. I'm just going to do a quick breakdown on a few different things. One being the power. So I know that I mentioned I was using a Dakota Lithium battery. I was lucky enough to team up with Dakota Lithium. They hooked me up with some trolling motor batteries for the John boat and a 100 amp hour battery for the kayak. Now you can use a regular lead acid battery with this kayak, but it's also compatible with lithium batteries, which is really nice because they're considerably lighter and they hold power longer as well, like two times as much as your standard lead acid battery because they can just be drawn down so much more. I can also say that I was either moving spots or had the spot lock on the entire time that I was out. There was never really any long stretch of time where I had the motor off and I hardly used any of the battery capacity of that 100 amp hour. I'm gonna do a full video soon on comparing lithium batteries to lead acid batteries, but that's for probably Thursday or something. So at full speed, I was clocking about four miles an hour, 4.2 I think was the highest that I saw, and that was with little or no wind. When I was going up into the wind with bigger gusts, which were probably up to 10 miles an hour, I was getting about 3.8 miles an hour. So speed is definitely not something that I'm super concerned about when I'm out on a kayak. But what I am concerned about is when I'm going from point A to point B, is when I get to point B, being able to fish efficiently. Being able to hit that spot lock button and sit in one area, whether I needed to tie some baits on, mess with camera gear, stop for a quick drink, a Red Bull, whatever it may have been, the spot lock kept you locked in. You just point the kayak directly into the wind, hit spot lock, and you're really gonna stay within like a little four foot area. It's awesome, completely like game changing. So take this one with a grain of salt. I'm a small dude, I'm 5'6", I weigh like 130 pounds, and I have very, very good balance because of my low center of gravity. But I can say that the stability in my experience was phenomenal. I never once felt uncomfortable, it never felt tippy. I was walking around the deck the entire time, and honestly, it got to the point where I was moving and controlling the trolling motor while standing up. And there were a couple of different times where I forgot that I had it set all the way on the full power of 10, and I'd click that propeller button on the remote and it would shoot off to the side and I had the trolling motor turned. And even then, it still felt comfortable like I wasn't gonna fall out of the boat. Don't suggest that you're standing up on this thing and moving around, but personally, I felt completely comfortable. The stability was great. And I was even fishing with the settings on the remote between like one and three, fishing down banks, standing up and casting. So this boat is pretty massive. There's plenty of space on this thing. I really liked the cockpit. It has a completely open floor space so I could walk circles around up there. And the aft tank on that boat is huge. I literally just threw all my stuff in there. I didn't try to organize it or really put it in there carefully, but it had plenty of space for my camera bag, that blue crate with all my tackle boxes in it. And I didn't even use the front hatch at all. So there's plenty of space on this kayak. I couldn't imagine a situation where I'd need more. So let's take a second and look at the price of this kayak. So $3,799, I'll be completely honest, when I first saw the price tag on this, my initial thought was, well, I could probably find a used John boat for this with an outboard, trolling motor, deck, trailer, and graph. And then once I took the kayak out and fished off of it, I realized how easy it was to use, how stable it was, how efficient I could fish off of it. And then I realized it really all comes down to preference. I know there's plenty of people out there that don't have the space to keep a John boat. They don't want the extra responsibility. They may live in an area that has more accessible kayak only or hand launch areas and that a kayak may be a better option for you. I guess the question is, but I pay nearly $4,000 to have this kayak. I probably wouldn't because I already have the John boat. But if I didn't have the John boat, and I really wanted to get into fishing kayak tournaments or just fishing smaller waters in general, then I can honestly say that this is the only kayak that I would want to fish out of on a daily basis. And while it's very, very expensive, 
I would be saving up all my pennies until I could have this Autopilot 120. So overall, this was just the first trip. I'm a very big believer in putting things to their true test of use, and I mean like hours and hours and days and days worth of use before giving a legitimate review. But I can say confidently that after the four hours of being out there, no hiccups, very smooth run, and I'm highly impressed with the Autopilot 120. Can't thank Old Town enough for hooking me up with the kayak and allowing me to review it and fish off of it. And at this point, I'm looking for things that I need to do to make it a little bit more efficient for me. I'm looking for some sort of box to hold on my tackle and a couple rod holders in the back, as well as a transducer setup for the Solix 12. Now that might be a little bit overkill on the kayak, but I've already got it, might as well use it. Again, thank you to Old Town for supplying me with this kayak. If you guys wanna check out the Autopilot 120, I'll leave a link for it down in the description below. Also, if you guys have any suggestions, tips, whatever it may be, please leave them down in the comment section below. When it comes to kayak fishing, I'm an absolute newbie and I would love any input. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you on the next one.